Hello, and welcome back to Voyage of a Time Wonder. Today I thought I'd do something a little bit different and take you along with me on a book and plant shopping adventure. So today is Saturday, April 24th, which is Independent Booksellers uh, Day, and my local bookstore has some special deals for the day, and I thought it would be just fun to go out and uh, do a little bit of book shopping as well as support my local independent bookstore on this day. So I thought it would be fun to bring you guys along with me. I'm going to both my local independent bookstore as well as our little local secondhand bookstore and then on to the nursery uh, to buy some uh, herbs and vegetable starts uh, for my balcony garden. It's a uh, cold and rainy uh, spring day as you can see. April showers bring May flowers so we are definitely experiencing the April showers uh, spectrum of that right now. So it's the perfect day to spend inside browsing a bookstore. So I will check in uh, at the secondhand bookstore, which is going to be my first stop. Bye.
Okay, so I have just finished um, visiting the two bookshops. I got a few books that I'm really excited about, so I think when I get home I'll do a quick little haul uh, to add on to the end of this video, and now I'm getting ready to go to uh, the nursery to pick up a couple plants, so I'll see you there. I am done at the garden center looking a little windswept here but I wanted to show my uh, plants that I picked up. It's still a little bit too cold in my area to plant out into the containers because I will still have to bring them in overnight for another couple of weeks but last time I missed out on a couple plants that I really wanted because I waited uh, too far into May to go plant shopping so there's a couple things I really wanted like cilantro and lettuce that I really wanted to make sure I got so let me show you my plants. So this is my little uh, tray of plants. I got uh, parsley, cilantro, I got a patio tomato. I had this same cultivar last year and it was really awesome. It doesn't grow too, too tall, but you still get lots of tomatoes off of it. I got a beautiful mint, uh, two lemon balms. I love taking lemon balm leaves in the summer and adding them to lemonade or iced tea. I got some kale. Kale also did really well in my balcony garden last year, uh, so I'm excited to grow that again. I got a dill, even though I swore I wouldn't do dill again, but this is claims it's a dwarf dill, so hopefully it won't uh, take over like, like it did last year. I got chives, uh, basil, and a thing of romaine lettuce. So I'm really excited to transform my balcony into a little urban oasis again. I love sitting out on my balcony and reading in the summertime and having all those herbs and vegetables at the ready when I'm preparing dinner. So I'm on my way home now and, and I will update you with a little book haul when I get home. Okay so I am back home now and I have my little book haul from my shopping adventure today to celebrate uh, Canadian Independent Booksellers Day. I'll start with the books that I got at my local secondhand bookstore, my used bookstore. I got three books at my local secondhand bookstore. The first is Vancouver by David Cruz and Ellison Griffiths, and this is a giant book, but it's apparently uh, similar to the big Edward Rutherford books on Paris and London, and kind of a little bit like uh, Ken Foley's Pillar of the Earth trilogy, where uh, we are focusing on uh, Vancouver, the city, which is in my province, and we are examining that from the time of the Ice Age through to the modern era. So I have this beautiful cover showing a First Nation settlement in the Vancouver area, and it says on the back here, beginning in the dying era of the last Ice Age and spanning thousands of years, Vancouver starts with the story of the last survivor of a Siberian people and moves through history in a dynamic tapestry. Fascinating characters come to life, including a Russian cartographer, a Scottish trapper, a Chinese peasant boy, and a young woman from the desperate streets of Vancouver's downtown east side. All share a powerful attraction to this unique storied place. An absorbing historical chronicle, the long-awaited first of its kind in Canada, Vancouver is a tale of human struggle and adventure and a dazzling feat of storytelling. You'll never look at Vancouver or the Northwest quite the same. So that sounds like a really interesting uh, local to me read. Then I got Figures of Silk by Venora Bennett. And this is set in the court of Edward IV, who is one of my favorite of the British kings. And we are uh, following two sisters, Jane and Isabel. And Jane apparently ends up having a dalliance with the king. And Isabel marries into a family who has a wealthy uh, silk merchant business. 
It says at the end of the blurb here, as Isabel grows in power and her plan for a silk industry run by English women is set into motion, the political landscape shifts in dangerous ways. One sister will fall as the other rises and choices must be made that will change their lives forever. So this kind of gave me like other Bolin girl vibes with, with the two sisters and the political intrigue inside a late medieval uh, British court. And I do really love um, the Edward IV era in English history, so I'm interested to see uh, this novel's perspective on that time period. And then my last pick from the used bookstore was A Sudden Light by Garth Steen, and he wrote The Art of Racing in the Rain, which was one of my favorite books from 2015, I think? It was like one of my all-time favorites that year, and it was uh, from the perspective of a dog, uh, through the dog's life as this family's pet. Um, so when I saw that this was written by the same author, uh, I was very intrigued. It has this beautiful uh, inset in the cover. And uh, this had that magic keyword for me, multi-generational, and I was, I was sold. Uh, apparently this book is a grand, gorgeous, multi-generational epic of the Pacific Northwest. When a boy tries to save his parents' marriage, he uncovers a vast legacy of family secrets. From what I could gather on Goodreads, this boy and his father move into an old house that is in the family, and it may or may not be haunted. I Because I loved the art of racing in the rain so much, I was willing to pick this one up without knowing much about it. Our used bookstore is also kind of a comic book shop slash art shop, and so I was really excited to pick up a paint by number kit uh, of this beautiful lilac um, image. And I've been wanting to try a paint by number again for a while. I did one as a kid and enjoyed it, but I was thinking that it would be kind of the perfect um, thing to do when sitting inside listening to an audiobook. It's printed onto the canvas inside and it comes with all the paint and brushes and everything you need. So I'm hoping this will be really fun and I picked up a smaller um, one for my husband to do as well. Then from my local independent bookshop I picked up three as well. Um, two nonfiction and one African literature. I'll start with the African lit. I picked up This Mournable Body by Tsitsi uh, Dengaremga. This one came out last year and I believe it's a sequel uh, to her book Nervous Conditions, which I'm hoping to get to in May. So if I enjoy Nervous Conditions, I'll have the sequel right here uh, to follow on with the story. And this is set in modern day Harare, Zimbabwe. And it says on the back here, when Tambuze first sets out to rebuild the financial and social status she spent her wor youth working on, she could not have known that every move she made would bring her one step closer to sacrificing the dignity of her family and community. Her choices seem innocuous. She moves from a rundown youth hostel in downtown Harare to a widow's boarding house, and she finds work first as a biology teacher and then in the opportunistic field of ecotourism. But when a long overdue homecoming culminates in a humiliating spectacle, Tambudze is forced to consider whether it was her circumstances or her decisions that brought her to this breaking point. This author's works are considered classics among African literature, and that sounds like uh, such an intriguing and relevant storyline to explore. Then the other two I picked up are nonfiction. I picked up A History of Canada in 10 Maps by Adam Schultz. This is one that I've had on my radar for a while and had kind of forgotten about until I saw it in the shop today. And it is exactly what it says on the title. It has uh, 10 chapters and looks at 10 different maps, which are in the middle here, 10 different maps of Canada and kind of how that ties into different historical events. So the first chapter starts with a map from the Vikings. Then we have uh, Champlain, we have Alexander Mackenzie, we have David Thompson, we have the Siege of Fort Erie, we have a map of the Arctic, and I just think this is such a fascinating way to explore a country's history through um, specific maps that uh, tell stories about what was going on in that time period. It says on the back, every map tells a story and every map has a purpose. It invites us to go somewhere we've never been. A history of Canada in 10 maps conjures the world as it appeared to those who were called upon to map it. Adam Schultz, one of Canada's foremost explorers, tells the stories behind these centuries-old maps and how they came to shape what became Canada. It brings to life the characters and the bloody disputes that forged our history by showing us what the world looked like before it entered the history books. Combining storytelling, cartography, geography, archaeology, and of course history, this book shows us the country in a way we've never seen it before. So of course, that sounds very interesting to me and I am looking forward to reading this book maybe in July to help celebrate Canada Day. And then lastly, I got Gone Viking, a travel saga by Bill Arnott. This is one that, again, I had seen um, some discussion of online. And after reading some of my Norwegian uh, family history books earlier this year, it definitely um, piqued my interest. It says, 
To go Viking is to embark on an epic journey. For more than eight years, Bill Arnott traveled through the Northern Hemisphere, discovering sites Scandinavian explorers had raided, traded, and settled, finding Viking history in a wider swath of the planet than most anthropologists and historians ever imagined. With a small pack and a weatherproof journal, Bill explores and writes with a journalist's eye, songwriter's prose, poet's perspective, and a comedian's take on everything else. Prepare yourself for an armchair adventure like no other. From Europe to Asia, the Mediterranean to the British Isles, through Scandinavia to Iceland, Greenland, and the New World, with further excursions around Thor, Heyerdahl's Pacific, Roald Amundsen's Arctic, and Ulf Crowbone's stormy North Atlantic, Bill takes readers on a mythic personal adventure in real time, a present-day Viking quest. So this book is literally just chapters um, of places that this man visited that have connections um, to the Viking Age uh, and where Viking explorers or traders um, traveled to. So having that combination of kind of archaeology and Viking history with um, modern day uh, travel memoirs sounded like it might be a bit similar to Nancy Marie Brown's books that I had enjoyed so much earlier this year, so I am excited to get to this one whenever I get back around to Norway in my Family Tree read-alongs. And this bookstore, because it was Independent Booksellers Day, also gave us these little goodie bags. I haven't actually seen what's inside, so this will be like a little unboxing. We have uh, an exclusive bookmark that we can color in ourselves for um, Canadian Independent Booksellers Day. Ooh, we have two tea bags. We have English Breakfast, this is one of my favorites, and Lemon Ginger, yum. I guess I'll be drinking a cup of tea when I crack into one of these new books. I have a pen from HarperCollins. Ooh, and I have a brand new mask. How exciting, a book-themed mask. Let me crack this open. Oh, it says, I shop local, and it's got books on it. Ooh, and it's one of the nice ones with the little um, metal to make it so your, your glasses don't fog up. Ooh, new favorite mask. <laughs> I love like the little succulents. Oh yeah, I'm definitely gonna be sporting this one. Okay, so that is everything I got at my local bookstores today in support of Canadian Independent Booksellers Day. Uh, until next time, enjoy wandering through the pages of a good book. Bye.